Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about something called torticollis. This is most often an issue that occurs in infants, however this can occur in pretty much anyone. We're going to direct this mostly to the pediatric end of things today because that tends to be our largest population. However, the exercises that we do with an infant will be the exact same exercises that we perform with ourselves if we happen to have this issue as adults. Now that said, some of the other habits that we can actually create torticollis with might be affecting us as adults as well. So it's important to pay attention all the way through if this is something that you're having, just because you may notice that some little things that we do with children may also affect us greatly into adulthood. Now what torticollis is, is a preferential positioning of the head. Very often what you're going to see is a lateral bending towards one side and a rotation towards the other. This is usually because of a shortening in the muscle that runs right through here, known as the sternocleidomastoid, or SCM for short. You'll hear both of those very often thrown around by your doctor, so it's just nice to know what they are. Now this muscle shortening can be caused by a variety of things. Very often children will even come out of the womb like this. And it's just because of the position that they happen to be resting in inside the womb allowed that muscle to shorten over time. Now the great news about pretty much all muscle shortening is that as long as it's orthopedic based like this and not neurological, and very rarely is torticollis neuro neurological, this can be stretched relatively easy. Most muscles are very pliable and you'll find that almost always you can stretch them out fairly simply. If you find that a child tends to lean its head to one side, the stretch is nice and simple, we're going to lay them flat on the ground and gently pull their head to the opposite side. Now you don't want to pull into the point of discomfort, and obviously we can't just ask an infant if they're uncomfortable, so watch for facial cues, verbal cues like crying, and make sure that we're not seeing any redness in the face as you start to move. That can signify that we're getting a little bit of discomfort, and that's not the point of a stretch. The point of a stretch is to very gently change the position so that we allow some gentle elongation. Most stretches are held somewhere between 15 seconds and a minute, depending on how comfortable they are. If the child tries to squirm out too quickly and they don't want to last for the whole minute, that's okay. Repetition is fine, and the more times you do a stretch throughout the day, the better. I generally recommend somewhere between four or more times a day. And sometimes people have told me that they found it easiest when they go to diaper change because the ba baby is already on the table. Now obviously we're not just stuck in side bending. Very often we've also rotated. Now if a child has a rotational preference to look over the left shoulder, I'm gonna very simply, when they're lying on their back, gently move them to the right side, allowing that muscle again to elongate in a different direction. Same thing, about 15 seconds at a time, up to 60 seconds, depending on the child's comfort. Now this works well with adults too, but we don't need to be laying flat on our backs in order to do these stretches. If this muscle's tight and I need to lean away, I can very simply cue myself by looking in a mirror to make sure I'm not getting any weird rotational movements. And as I'm looking forward, it's easier for me to use my neck than to try and crank it around with my own hands. Now, all of these shortenings are very, very common both in adults and in children, but very commonly, if it's not because of something that they were born with, we're going to see a habitual pattern because they like to look one direction or another. Now, this can be the result of many things, but very often things like carrying a baby over the same shoulder all the time, nursing with the same arm holding them all the time so they're always facing the same direction. Also, laying a baby down so its head is always at the same end of the bed can all create some sort of pattern. Now that last one sounds a little bit strange, but you'll find that very many babies like to look out the door towards their parents, or if they're in the same room, towards their parents' bed. If I'm always laying down and looking towards one direction, it can create a shortening on that one side. And what that means is that if I turn the head of the bed, or just place the pillow on the opposite end, so that the baby's always looking different directions in order to look out that door, you're going to find a little bit less of a preference. But very often as adults, we can do the same thing. We sit in a chair that's positioned a little bit offset from a television. If we always tend to be looking one direction when we sleep, changing up some of these habits can prevent some of that habitual shortening in ourselves. Now, other than that, the only reason we're really worried about this in babies more than adults, other than the discomfort, is sometimes when babies spend a lot of time on their backs, if their heads always turn to one direction and they're not frequently moving, we can start to see a flattening in the base of the skull along that side. That plagiocephaly sounds a lot scarier than it is. Our skulls are very malleable at a young age, which and actually can be a good thing. Because that means that once they start moving in a more regular pattern, very often, as long as you caught this early enough, that will right itself. Now some babies will need to be placed in a corrective helmet for short periods of time, and that can be prescribed and created by certain orthopedists. But all the news about that is good. 
Usually almost no brain damage will ever occur with this, and very rarely will you see long-term issues. It's just something we always want to catch early so that we don't have any strange growth development over time. If you ever have any questions about this, your pediatrician, physical therapists, and certain orthotics prosthetists and orthopedic developers can help you out with different ways and different tricks of things you can do to make sure that these occur less frequently. Now if you have any further questions about this to direct towards us, you are more than welcome to contact us anytime and we're always happy to get back to you. Have a great day guys.